Okay, so let's talk about, first of all, the parts of the thread. So I don't know how many of you have actually cut your thread, probably all of you, I would imagine. Um, but uh, in thread math, we just have to know a few things about threads. Number one, we have to be able to identify the different parts of the thread. Uh, so for us to do the math, we have to know where the crest of the thread is. So as identified here, it's the peak, right? It's the highest point on the thread. The root is the lowest part of the thread. And amongst some other um, uh, descriptions with regards to the width of a crest flat, width of a cr uh, root flat, we won't be discussing in this, it won't have any bearing on our math. There are some other parts of the thread that we won't be discussing, um, but the crest, the root, and the thread angle are important. Now the thread angle, that's the included angle of the thread, so if you are making a threading tool, which some of you may have done, uh, you had to create a 60 degree uh, form on your your cutting tool and because it's the shape it's the geometry that's 60 degree geometry that will plunge into your part to create your thread so continue with parts of the thread um, when it comes to the crest and the root, they play an important role when we later on have to solve the depth of a thread. The depth of a thread is measured from the crest to the root, and it's the distance that you actually physically engage your cross feed on your lathe, or if you're using the compound rest, um, if your compound rest is coming in straight on a 90 degree angle, or if you have it set on a 30 degree or 29 degree angle, um, your threading tool still will have to sit perpendicular to the surface of your workpiece and the amount or the, the um, amount of engagement that you have into the workpiece on a single side uh, is your single depth. So this is a linear movement that you will make. If your cutting tool starts at this red line, you will move your hand wheel the exact distance of the single depth to create the right geometry on your uh, your thread. Uh, pitch, now this is important. Uh, pitch is the distance from any point on one of your threads. So this is one thread, okay? So it's a distance from a point on one thread to the exact same point on the next thread. So notice, you know, there's no indication where exactly this point is, but the pitch of a thread, uh, you can pick any point on a thread and the pitch will be the distance from that point you pick to the exact same place on the next thread. So it doesn't matter where that is. I could pick this point here or I could pick these points here. It doesn't matter, but it's always from, and this is important, any point on a thread to the exact same point on the next thread. That is pitch. And um, I don't know why it's not scrolling through. There we go. Uh, why that's in, uh, maybe I should, I'll go back to that in a bit. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about pitch in a few minutes. Uh, there's another thing that we have to be aware of. Uh, on thread so I don't know if you can see in the camera here nice and clear okay but here is a is a, is a thread right obviously and when we need to manufacture this thread uh, we need to set up our machine we need to set up our lathe so that the the cutting tool right the cutting tool will uh, will move at a certain feed rate and the spindle will turn at a certain spindle speed so that not all of the surface of this material will cut. We end up cutting a groove because the tool is moving fast enough to not cut the entire circumference. So that, that ratio of uh, RPM to feed is important in creating uh, the number of threads that we want and the pitch of those threads. And, and this is something we're gonna talk about a little bit more in a few minutes, but pitch is important to understand. 
But there's another a part of uh, threads that's also important for us to understand, and that's our pitch diameter. So our, our pitch diameter, what that is, is uh, imagine uh, an, a, an imaginary cylinder that is that runs through your threads. Okay, now you might think, well, it's imaginary. Why does it matter? But there is no cylinder here, right? But we have to imagine that there is a cylinder running through the threads, but where, right? So it's an imaginary cylinder that passes through the thread at a point. So this, this side of the cylinder is passing through the thread at a point where the groove, this is the groove of the thread, okay? Where the groove and the thread width are equal. So in other words, see this the green line here? So where this cylinder passes through, this imaginary cylinder crosses the thread right here at this point, the, the measurable di distance from this point right here to this point right here. Let's say we, we could measure that, okay? The distance from here to here. And let's say that measures exactly 0.1, exactly. Then if I were to measure the distance in the groove from where the imaginary cylinder crosses the thread here and then crosses the next thread here, the distance across the groove also is 0.1. So this imaginary cylinder, if we move the, the width, the diameter of the cylinder, if we open it up, then these lines will still cross the thread out here, but the distance across the meat of that thread might only be 0.5, but the distance across the open space of the groove may now be 1.5. So this cylinder, we have to imagine that where it passes through the threads, that as the, the width of the thickness of the thread and the width of the open space are identical where that imaginary cylinder um, is cut. And why that's important, we won't go into too much detail, but a pitch diameter is important in, in creating, uh, creating the threads themselves and then in the engagement of those threads. Uh, especially if we have to um, tap a hole after uh, using a tap drill, right? A, a tap drill is required uh, before you put a tap in. Well, uh, how do we know what size tap drill? So tap drill sizes are based on pitch diameter so that there is enough material for that uh, that tap to cut. So pitch diameter is important for us to know. Standard, uh, a standard thread use, so we use metric th threads and we use imperial threads. And what we use here in Canada for imperial threads is based on the unified national series of threads. So you've probably seen these in the shop as, uh, for, this is an example of one, a half inch 13 UNC, which stands for unified national course okay unified national course so the last letter in this in these uh, in this acronym this last letter uh, can be exchanged depending on the type of thread so if it's a coarse thread you'd see a C there if it's a fine thread it would be UNF if it's a special it'd be UNS uh, super fine UNSF so there are uh, you can exchange this last letter according to the thread design, but they're all part of the Unified National series of threads. And as far as the theory on those threads, what qualifies them to be a part of that Unified National series, um, you will, you'll get that in your um, theory classes. So let's break down, before we can do some of this math, we need to understand how to read a thread. Uh, a half inch 13 UNC, so if you wanted to imagine this was a, a half inch okay, uh, thread that you needed to create, um, a half inch 13, we need to understand, well, what makes this a half inch 13? Because this, this is a standard used throughout industry. So the half inch is the, the major diameter. It's the distance across the thread. So if you took a micrometer or... Uh, dial calipers and you just measured the outside of this bolt you would be measuring the major diameter it's the largest width right 
So that's what the half inch stands for. It's the nominal size. Now, it isn't exactly 0.5 inches. Okay, there is a certain amount of clearance that is uh, built onto this, this uh, thread. But this is the half inch 13 thread. And when I go and buy a half inch 13 nut, they will fit. Uh, imagine if this was exactly half an inch. And then I went and I bought a nut. And the mating thread was also exactly half an inch. I'd never get these assembled. I wouldn't be able to engage these because there's no clearance. They're exactly the same size. So even though this is identified as a half inch 13, we're saying that the nominal size, this size, is half inch, even though we intentionally manufacture it with a slight amount of clearance on it. Okay. The 13 stands for the number of threads right so the number of threads over one inch so on the bottom here I, I just kind of blew this up so it'd be easier to see but imagine between the two red lines that that's a, that's one inch you would physically be able to count 13 threads uh, in that one inch length so a half inch 13 bolt like this if you took uh, a, a caliper and you set it at one inch and just put it on the threads you would physically be able to count 13 threads and that's what that 13 means so it's a half inch nominal size bolt with 13 threads every inch and it's a unified national course thread so this is of the course series okay now let's go to our next so that was a major diameter minor diameter it's the distance from one root to the root on the other side, right? So it's the smallest diameter. Now, there are ways um, that we can measure the root diameter or the minor diameter of a thread. It's, it's not easy with our, our um, typical measuring tools. Even with a, a pair of dial calipers, uh, you know, the, the beveled edge beveled me measuring edge of those calipers, uh, they're often not small enough even to get to the root of the thread. So there are other ways to measure. If it's really, really critical uh, and the part is not still on a machine, we're actually measuring a physical thread that's off of a machine, uh, we can set it up and measure it under like a shadow graph, right, which blows it up so that we can see the thread. Uh, but there are other techniques uh, which we'll uh, talk about in a couple of minutes. But this is minor diameter. It is a measurable size, and it's the smallest uh, dimension across the threads. <coughs> so if we're going to manufacture a thread on the lathe, we have to be able to set that lathe up so that we can cut the exact number of threads per inch that we want. And that's, you know, there is a setting on your lathe where you can pick the number of threads per inch. Okay, but uh, before setting that, we you know if we're trying to create a thread, we we need to know some things about that thread. We need to be able to, uh, besides setting the number of threads per inch, we have to be able to figure out how deep am I going to cut that thread. We may know that we're going to cut a three eight you know three eight sixteen thread sixteen threads per inch, but how deep deep do I cut? So some of the other things we need to know about manufacturing these threads um, we're going to talk about here. And the first thing is the pitch. Now we already talked about what the pitch is, but how important this is. Our solving pitch and, and rounding to the right number of decimal places, it matters. It, you know, when we think back to that slide where we just had, you know, a line from the center of this thread to a line to the center of this thread saying this is the pitch. Well, if it's, you know, one thou this way or one thou that way, you know, does it really make that much of a difference? In some cases, it may not. But pitch is directly um, related to the depth of a thread. We need to know the pitch so that we can solve the depth. So, you know, we run into a problem of accumulating error if we are taking liberties and not worried about you know plus or minus two thou here plus or minus two thou there all of a sudden we manufacture that thread and it doesn't go together so pitch changes 
this is the first thing we need to understand. Depending on the size of the thread that we're making, the pitch changes. Uh, just look here. So, sorry, just look here. I have two threads. Okay. So this first thread, if I were to take a one inch, uh, set a one inch, um, my calipers at one inch, sorry, uh, and count the number of threads over that inch, and then I set my calipers and count the number of threads here. I'm going to have less threads per inch on this thread design than I am here. That is directly related to pitch. Okay, so it's not just about depth, it's about how far the threads are away from one another. So if, if that's not set properly, then a mating nut obviously isn't going to fit. So since the thread angle on, on the unified national series of thread is always 60 degrees, the pitch of any unified national thread can be solved reliably with this formula, one divided by the number of threads. So if you want to solve pitch, which you will, then you just take one divide by what? Well, what thread am I looking at? Is it a half inch 13? If it is, then it's 1 divided by 13. Okay, to solve the pitch for a half inch 13, this is my formula. So simple, right? It's just a common fraction. 1 divided by 13, pitch equals 0 0.077. So the distance from any point on one thread to the exact same point on the next thread is 77 thou. So on a half inch 13 thread, if I were able to measure the distance from a point on one thread to the exact same point on the next thread, it would be exactly 77 thou. Okay, now I'm just gonna turn off my ringer here, sorry guys. You can see here quickly that pitch matters, right? Because if I'm not trying to cut a half inch 13, if I were to try and cut um, maybe a one inch 10, 10 threads per inch, well now it's one divided by 10. The distance from a point on one thread to the same point on the next thread is 0.1, right? So pitch matters. We need to be able to solve it, and it's directly related to the number of threads. It relies on the fact that the threads are always 60 degrees, and if we can solve pitch, then that means we can solve single depth. When you get on a machine and you're going to cut that first thread, you may be all set up, you've got it all sorted out, you've got it held right, you've got your tool ground, you've touched off your tool, machine spinning, how deep do I go? Right? So single depth, uh, it's the physical distance that you need to manually engage that hand wheel into the workpiece. It's a depth. It's a true length. Okay, To solve the single depth of a thread, the pitch must already be solved as the pitch distance will be multiplied by a constant. So basically what that means is for me to solve single depth, I have to know my pitch, as you can see in the formula below. Okay, I have to know my pitch first. I will take that pitch of that specific thread and I will multiply it by this constant, 0.61343. That constant allows us to create what we refer to as a 75% thread. Remember we just said about if I were to take a, a, a thread on a bolt and a thread on a nut and they were both exactly 0.5 major diameter, they'll never engage. So this constant, this 0 0.61343 is, um, I think of it as a percentage of a fully, uh, a true 0.5 thread. This is a 75% fit. Okay, so what it does is it allows for some clearance on the crest and on the root so that the nut will spin onto the thread. So this number here, this 0 0.61343, uh, you don't you don't have to worry about it ever changing memorizing believe me if, if you do this enough times you, you'll never forget this number but you take the pitch that you've already solved so we had a 77 thou pitch right we multiply that by this constant and we get 0.61343
a single depth of 47 thou. So if you wanted to cut this half inch 13 thread and you have your machine set up so that it's uh, going to cut 13 threads per inch, now all you need to know is what the RPM is, engage your split nut, and as the tool is coming along, you just have to engage your, your, your tool, your cutting tool, in increments of whatever, 10 thou at a time, uh, until you get to 47 thou for your last cut. So when you are physically engaged into the part, linearly on one side, if you've gone in exactly 47 thou, you now are at full depth. You have cut the single depth of that thread, okay, at 75%, which is what you're after, okay? That's what this number represents. The last thing that we want to talk about uh, as far as uh, cutting, uh, um, measuring threads is the minor diameter. We know the major diameter is the distance across the crests. The minor diameter is the distance across the roots. We know what the major diameter is because we're told that it's a half inch 13. So that major diameter, the nominal size is half an inch or 0.5. So we already know that. We know what a single depth, we know how to measure single depth now, right? We start by solving pitch, 1 divided by 13, because it's a half inch 13. We solve the pitch, that gives us 77 thou. We take that 77 thou and we multiply it by our constant, 0.61343, and that gives us a single depth, the distance from the crest to the root on one side of that bowl. Logic dictates then, if I have a major diameter and I subtract a single depth on this side and a single depth on this side, I have the minor diameter, right? And that's what our formula says here. Minor diameter is equal to the major diameter minus two single depths. Single depth plus single depth, okay? So if we wanted to know what the minor diameter of a half inch 13 bolt should be, if we were to measure it, it should measure 0 0.406. That should be our, our minor diameter, okay? So you might be thinking, we talked about this for a second, you know, you know, how do we measure this then? This, it, it, most of the time we can't measure it with calipers. And I'm not gonna go into it in much detail. I have three, two slides here that I wanna show you. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a piece of advice if you are, and maybe you've already cut your thread and messed it up, or maybe you did great. But one thing that you should always try and do is, before you take your part out of the machine, uh, you should check uh, your thread size. Uh, you should verify that you are to depth. And there's a couple of ways that we can do this. When cutting to the solved single depth, so we solved it to 47 thou. When you're cutting to that solved depth on a manual machine, you just have to accept the fact that you will not get it perfect every time, probably any time. There's, a, there's several different little small errors that we could face, right? So one of those errors is maybe there was a little bit of backlash that we didn't get rid of. So when we touched off the tool, uh, maybe there was still some backlash there. So we're five or six thou out. Maybe when we touched off, we touched off a little too hard. Maybe our, our, our touch off is a little harder than the next person. Uh, so maybe we're scoring that material and we're already two thou into the part. So there are some things, uh, maybe we break the, the, the tip of the cutting tool and we don't notice. There's a few things that can happen. So just accept the fact that when you're cutting threads, especially if you don't do it often, uh, there is a, a small amount of error there that we gotta we have to be aware of. So, <clears throat> In that case, it's important that before we take the thread out of the machine, we need to be able to measure it, or we should get in the habit of measuring it. Now, one of the ways that we can do this is with a thread micrometer. Now, they are expensive. If you can buy one, you'll make your life easy, but um, they're not cheap. But what that will do is it will give you the dimensions. You will be able to measure. It, it has different um, tips right, for the micrometer that you can screw on, and you can measure across the roots of the thread. Uh, the more common way, uh, poor man's way, but, you know, this has been around forever, is measuring over the wires. 
So I don't know if you've seen it. Maybe Rob's showed you in class, but uh, you can just buy a little package of uh, measuring wires, and they're uh, ground and lapped uh, wires that will sit. Uh, they're all the same size. So, for instance, you'll have uh, all these little compartments with three wires in them, and they're all marked what size they are. Um, now there's a formula in your technology machine tools book. There's a formula in there. If you go into, uh, <clears throat> I have my book here. If you go into your technology machine tools book and you reference, uh, page. Uh, I don't know, maybe a different page on yours. But anyway, it's um, chapter, unit 55, threads and thread cutting. Okay, and it's almost at the end of the chapter. It's about three pages from the end of the chapter. And there's a section there to calculate the measurement over the wires. Um, you can also, the you know, get this where most people get it is out of their... Uh, machinist handbook but in the in there there's a formula uh, for solving or figuring out what the best wire size so the first thing that we need to do is figure out well what wires do I use I can't just grab any wires I, I need to use the best wire size so there's a a little uh, formula there to plug in the information you already know and then you will be able to solve what the best wire size is so that's the first part of it and then the second part of it is to find the measurement over the wire. So there's a second formula there. And, and essentially how this works is you take the, those three wires, you put two on one side of the, of the threads, and you put one on the other side. So you have three points of contact. Okay. And then you take your micrometer, and this is the face of your micrometer, this is the anvil of your micrometer, right? And you you spin the micrometer closed until it's holding the wires in in the thread grooves and you are uh, actually measuring over these three ta these two tangent points will be in the same place well they, they should be right and then this tangent point so you have three points of contact that you're measuring over so when you measure over the wires the first thing that you're going to realize even by looking at this example is that well <laughs> What am I measuring, right? I'm actually measuring off the top of these circles. But the way measuring over the wires works, it compensates for that. Where these wires, where the tangent point of the circle meets the thread, uh, if you've chosen the best wire size, then it accommodates from the distance from this tangent point uh, in, a, in a straight line, okay? There's a triangle here, okay? So it accommodates from where that tangent point is to the center of the circle and, and the depth that's below that wire. Okay, so when you're solving best wire size, uh, it part of that is it needs to know, you know, wh what thread are you cutting, right? That's part of what you enter into that formula um, and the angle of that thread. So once you enter that inform information into your formula, then the distance from the root to where this tangent point would be at 90 degrees, uh, it compensates for that. So it, it, you'll know if you're the right depth by measuring across the top of these wires. Again, you can appreciate here that there is a little bit of room for error, right? Because your surface finish here just it may not be perfect. Um, you may clamp a little tighter than the next uh, student. So there are little discrepancies here, but for me, uh, measuring before taking the part out of a machine, if I have a, a thread mic, I'm gonna use that because uh, it's a direct read, right? I take the measurement, I use the ratchet, and when it starts clicking, I know I'm to depth, and whatever the digital readout says, that's my minor diameter. Uh, but with a little bit of practice, this type of measuring has been around for decades and it is very very reliable um, so if you get a chance and you have you haven't done this yet I would recommend you know I know you don't have many uh, hours left in the shop but if you can get a chance to do a uh, 
to measure over the wires, get a feel for that. It's a valuable skill to have uh, going into uh, machining.